All right, y'all, because get in here so we can talk about this latest episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and how they keep want to play in our face. And it's getting to be real bad. Before we even get started, though, make sure y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your post notifications on, and get down in these comments because y'all know we finna have to talk about it. And let's go on ahead and get into it. Now, of course, when we starting off, how we usually do, we got some filler scenes. We got Rennie getting her ultrasound. She in there with Black Zach, both of them cheese and teeth extra white. They just real happy. And I really love that for her because I feel like, you know, she deserves this. She says she's had a really hard time with her other kid's father um, and their situation. So I feel like Zach is the perfect mate for her. It's like he is so excited all the time when he's talking about that baby, even from when she first told him she was pregnant. I just really love that for her. Carly wants to throw an engagement party with Sierra. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all, go ahead and throw it. Waste y'all money because one thing I'm going to say, it's so funny to me to hear Carly and Sierra sit up and try to fake brag about how, oh, we keep rings and we keep we keep them in. We always get engaged. I see her in them lips. We always engage in Carly, what they say. We got the men keeper. What we got, you know, look down at the Ussy. But it's just kind of like, yeah, y'all can get the men, but y'all can't keep the men. So don't say that. Y'all get the rings, but then something happened, whether or not it's that you all choose to have to divorce them or leave them. Something in the buttermilk don't be clean. All right, so y'all need to quit doing all this bragging, honey. It ain't coming back to favor, neither one of y'all, but I'm going to let y'all take y'all pictures. Ashley and Zane meet up, um, and they talking about the barbecue that Zane had where Ashley addressed his family about the rumors with his son or supposed son with his ex, Michelle. And this is why I get so mad at Zane's ass. He has been pissing me off with stuff like this. Zane sits up and acts like... It's worse for him to just tell her the truth and be like, okay, look, Ashley, let me just put it all on the table. Let me just tell you right here. Yes, me and you got together. Me and Michelle was still kind of talking. It was an overlap. It was this. It was that. Just tell this woman. What you want to do is lead her into a lion's den where she goes and sits down. You want her to go have a sit down and talk to this woman who you know is going to come out of her mouth and tell this woman everything that you was doing behind Ashley back. So it's just kind of like, do you really care about Ashley at all? If you're going to lead her into that fucking lion's den and just let her be made a fool of on national TV like that, that is the thing that be pissing me off so bad because I see that stuff happen so often. Like the man... Because that's what it usually is. It's usually a man in a situation with two women. He thinks it's better to let the girl find out from the other girl than let the girl find out from you. You are who I'm laying down with every night. You're who this woman is married to. You're who this woman is spending her life with. Why do you think it would be better that she finds out some information about you potentially having a kid or you potentially still messing with Michelle while you and her were together why do you think it's better for her to hear that from Michelle and not you? It's just crazy. And then you want to sit there at the table and watch it go down. That's sick to me. That stuff is crazy and it's low-key psychotic to want to put yourself through all of that. Because you know somebody going to clock out. You know it's probably going to be Ashley. She's probably going to have a fit. She's probably going to go off at the table once she finds out at the, tr at the truth. But yet you still want to let that happen. I don't I don't understand that. Zane, you and your elf looking ass need to get yourself together. I'm sick of you doing this stuff to this girl. This girl ain't even been on TV a hot three, four episodes. And you already got her looking real dumb. Anyway, speaking of looking dumb, Rashida meets up with Kai. Well, she don't meet up with Kai. She at the restaurant. Hun and Kai look like they working in the kitchen and they talking about Kirk. Um, Kelsey ends up showing up and they all sitting there having a conversation. Rashida basically like, you know, I ain't with all the BS about, you know, the text messages and, you know, um, Jasmine saying that she wants to call Kirk out because he told a lie on her when he said that she comes to the door butt naked. Now, here is the thing. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're getting into some reality. Kelsey speaks up and say, don't Kelsey sound like Coco Kiss? Y'all remember Coco Kiss from back in the day? I make the boys cry. I just shake that on your booty. It was like a little, shake that on your booty. She had an onion booty sign, but her voice was real high because every time I heard Kelsey talk, y'all, I was just like, where is the bass? She don't have absolutely no treble in her vocal cords at all. It's all high pitch. 
So Kelsey just like, you know, I went and got Cannon a couple of times myself. And I don't think that dad meant butt naked or actually naked. He kind of meant like you're coming to the door in like your bra or with no bra on and stuff like that. I think that's what he meant. Whatever it is that, that he meant. He said it on national TV, and that's what y'all are failing to realize. He opened this can of worms. Kirk is the one that opened this whole entire can of worms. He went on there and, and told her, don't come to my, you know, when I come and pick Cannon up, rather, are you going to come to the door naked? And that involved, and that in turn had her feeling like, oh, you trying to be funny. Okay, so now I'm going to put out some truth because she does have text messages of y'all's dad sitting up texting her saying that if I give you more money, we're going to be, you know, smashing. And I, it just, it really throws me how y'all are all sweeping over that part. Everybody's going back to what Jasmine said, what, you know, the money situation was. Kirk takes care of Cannon. Kirk is a good dad. When none of us are saying none of that ain't true, but we are glazing over the fact that you seen Rashida, you seen text messages where your husband was sitting up literally telling her it's going to be this amount if we fucking. And if we not, it's not going to be nothing else. You seen that with your own two eyes. You went off about it last episode. So it's like, why are you seeing her talking to these children and making it seem like that's not the issue? If anything, you need to be real with them. They grown. They can handle it. Even Kai. Like, he is grown. He can handle it. You need to be real and tell them y'all daddy is on some BS. He out here doing God knows whatever. Tell Kelsey, you know... Since he called you more when me and him going through it, maybe you need to start being his therapist and giving him a talk and let him know that what he's doing is foul. Not sitting up talking to him like, Dad, you are a good dad, and I know you take care of Kenneth. No, none of that. Stop babying Kirk. Kirk need a foot up his ass. And that just is what it is, period. Carly and Sierra, they taking their engagement pics together. Um, they talking about this whole Bambi situation and Sierra seeming like she confused because she don't know whose side to take. She don't know who to believe. Carly all like, okay, well, Sierra, let me just ask you this. If, you know, now that you and Eric is broke up, if I go and do business with Eric, would you feel away? And Sierra like, yeah, I would. I would feel away. Now that part of it, I can't say that I fought Carly completely on. I probably would feel a way too if I had a close friend, a close friend of mine that started doing business with my ex after we done went through it and you know it was a bad breakup and you know we're not on good terms. I might feel a way too. However, what I'm not going to do is start just accusing her of sleeping with the ex just because they're doing business. And that's where I feel like Carly be crossing a whole lot of boundaries because it's like she keeps on making these statements like Bambi trying to steal her man that she got now. Bambi is sleeping with, um, you know, the ex that she's doing business with. She's sleeping with Kai. And I feel like all of that stuff is very damaging. And if you don't know, you shouldn't say that. And especially the fact that you and her have been friends for so long. And then out of nowhere, you start saying nasty stuff like that. That's crazy to me. You should at least give her a little bit more grace than that. If anything, that's just how I feel. Saucy performing. Of course, he takes his mind with him again. Um, After the performance, it, it, and it looked lit. It looked like he up there shaking that tail feather. After the performance, him and his mama sit down. They have a talk. He's catching her up on Chef D and the whole Zell situation. I think he just... Broke the news to her that Zell got a baby on the way. They talk about that a little bit. But again, y'all, I keep saying this as well. It is very obvious that Saucy's mama does not want him to be gay. And that just is what it is. She set up and immediately started the conversation like, um, you know, yeah, we can talk about a Chef D because he's talking about marriage and ain't nobody getting married. And it's just like, why in the hell ain't he getting married? He's gay. If he wants to marry somebody, it's going to be a man. So you need to start getting used to that now versus sitting up and tricking yourself into thinking it's never going to happen. And then you're going to be looking up stupid in a couple of years if this man does decide to either get married or settle down even and be in a long-term relationship with a man. Like, what you think he doing? He just playing with all these men? You think he just, like, he's at this grown age and he just, for the hell of it, Love sloshing that big old ass around, getting his nails done, putting on dresses, pulling up with literal skirts and, and two-piece sets on. Like, that is not how that goes, honey. That man wants a man, and you need to just accept it. 
for real. Zane goes ahead and meets with Ashley and Michelle. Michelle shows up first, and I must say, it just looked real flirty. Honestly, it looked like that man still love that girl. He's sitting up. He gave a hug. He giving her all these compliments. He's sitting real close to her. Meanwhile, Ashley come in a little bit later, and when she get in, it just really don't even seem like it just seemed like he gave Michelle a better welcome than he gave his own wife. And that just is what it is. He did, you know, greet her and all of that, sit her down at the table, call for drinks. But when they get started talking, baby, it just seemed like everything goes straight to left field. Ashley starts asking Michelle about the son and about like, what was the time frame between her getting pregnant and Ashley becoming his wife or them getting together. I can't remember if it was them getting married or them actually starting um, a marriage or them starting a relationship rather. And Michelle just basically saying, no, Zane definitely knew about my son before he married you and before all of that. Like none of this was a secret. And that's what I mean, Zane. You sitting here in the middle of this table looking absolutely stupid. And then when your wife turned to you and said, oh, so for real, you knew about the baby, you knew about all of his Zane, and you sitting up like, oh, I, I might have, yeah, you know what, now that I think about it, I might have known about it. Nick, you knew you knew about this damn baby, and you let this woman come and sit at a table with another woman that can make her look stupid. That is so cringy to me. Like, that is one of my biggest pet peeves. I hate that because it shows who you're protecting, period. Ashley also starts asking like, okay, so are you sure that the baby is Zane's? And Michelle straight up tell her the baby's not Zane's and he ain't even no baby. He, you know, he's grown at this point, damn near. He's not a baby and no, he's not Zane's. But Zane told me when I was pregnant and when I had him, he didn't care nothing about him not being biologically his. He wanted him to have his last name and he wanted to raise him. And that is is the biggest dagger to the heart that you could have really served your wife up on a platter at a table with your ex. I mean, it just is ridiculous. You knew what you had already told this woman. You knew you already had told her that you did not care that he was not yours. Yet you're telling your wife, you don't have a clue. Y'all ain't did no paternity. You not sure. You don't know why he got your last name. You lost. All of that. And we knew when your parents called you out at that barbecue that you were lying. But you still allowed your wife. Instead, that should have been the moment when you sat her down and talked to her and said, you know what, Ashley, come on. We got to have a heart to heart. We got to have a real sit down talk. It been some stuff that I ain't told you. And here it is. I'm finna just lay it all out now. No, you still let that girl go into a meeting with your ex and look stupid. And for that, I just don't have any respect for you, Zane. I'm sorry. Ashley, she's a pile, of course. She's talking about... Well, if he ain't yours, if the if the little boy ain't yours, I want his last name changed. And it's kind of like you really can't have no say so in that at this point, especially when your husband was the one that told that woman that she could give her son his last name. Like now you demanding that it gets changed. That's not going to happen. I don't see it happening. Michelle even said, and she tried to sugarcoat it for you and said, okay, so you want me to take a last name that this is all this child has ever known. Now you want me or you expect me to go down to the courthouse and change his last name. That's not going to happen. And you have to be realistic about that. I mean, he is a child and maybe when he gets older and he's able to kind of fully comprehend and understand what kind of mess his parents made um, for him, then it will be a conversation of, can you get your name changed or something? But I think this is just something you're going to have to eat, Ashley. And if anybody that you want to pop in their mouth, it should not be Michelle. It needs to be Zane. You need to hit him in his eye, his mouth, his lip, anything you can get to. Whatever your hand hit first, pop him in it because all of this is his fault. You're looking stupid because of your own husband. And trust me, I know how the hell that can be, for real. Now, Spice is throwing Rennie a baby brunch. Um, Shekinah get there first, or Shekinah already there, basically. And it looked like she helping Spice decorate. Spice is joking with her, saying, uh, Shekinah, what did you do? Shekinah like, hey, you know what I did. I didn't help with Ali. I didn't help with Ali, and you welcome. You know what I'm saying? But Shekinah keep on saying stuff like, can you believe they done had sex with a real woman and got a baby on the way? And it's like, Shekinah, why do you keep on saying that? And then right when you said it, here comes Zell coming in. I don't know if production had that shit playing. They told Zell, wait a minute, Zell, don't walk in yet. Hold on. And as soon as they heard Shekinah start that damn statement, they said, okay, now, 
Get your ass in there. Because that's what it seemed like. Because here he come, walking in, right as Shekinah saying that. And Zell already looked like he in a bad mood. He looked like somebody had done cussed him out already in the day. Um, And he just ain't here for it. So he's like, Shekinah, I don't know why you doing all this, but you need to cut it out. Like, don't play with me today. What you mean I had a baby? I had sex with a real woman. Yeah, you see I got a baby on the way. Shekinah over here. Zell, I wasn't meaning it like that. I'm sorry. But it's like, Shekinah, you can apologize now, but you keep on saying stuff. You keep on making these kind of statements to the point where Zell done got up and stormed out, honey. He done got mad. He out in the parking lot. Apparently, he's still going off even though we can't hear him because Kendra come in and speak to Spice and speak to Shekinah. And she like, who's Zell out there in the parking lot talking about? And they like, Shekinah, that's Spice, Shekinah, because she said in here, tell that man, can you believe he had sex with a real woman, had the baby? And she kind of like, once again, like, y'all, I did not mean it like that. It's just, I'm surprised that he did. It's like, it doesn't matter, Shekana. Why does it matter? You don't need to mention the fact that this man got a baby on the way, period. Especially in the way that you're doing it. Now, the other ladies start arriving. Um, You got Sierra. You, I can't even remember who all else. But all the other ladies start arriving. Yandy. Rashida and then Zell come on back in and he like you know he gonna stay for a minute but you know she kind of need to shut the hell up now Rennie gets there and she looks so pretty y'all Rennie is really carrying this pregnancy with a glow um she comes in she speak to everybody the drama kind of dies down a little bit and they get ready to sit down to eat and of course her come big booty saucy switching in he hugging everybody but he sits down next to Shakana as they getting ready to eat and what happened? Now, <laughs> Shekinah, you just sat here and apologized to Zell, but you over here sitting and talking to um, Saucy. Now, granted, they were all speaking about Zell's baby mama reveal because everybody was talking about how Bambi and Carly got into it. But once again, Shekinah turned to Saucy and said, can you believe Zell had sex with a real woman and got a baby on the way? Now, he heard and he get up and he start clocking out and go off again. And here's the thing. Everybody start kind of giggling. And that means everybody from like Yandy to Rashida and then Zell, who's on the defense, his back up against the wall right now. Now, he already said something to Shakana and Zell. He like, what y'all over saying? You know he's going to be on the defense about Saucy because of his relationship with Saucy. Saucy get to hollering back in here. Boy, shut the hell up. Ain't nobody over here saying nothing about you. You can be on quiet because we not even talking about you. And the only thing we said was what everybody in here knows that you got a baby on the way. So you can shut the hell up. Everybody starts to giggling about the whole back and forth that they having. Zell back against the wall, honey. He start lashing out. And see, Yandy, I don't even know why you laughing because yo, huh, you got bigger things to worry about. You and Rashida, y'all husbands is out here cheating on y'all. Y'all think everything cute. But yeah, we just going to keep talking about me. I'm coming at all, y'all. And I don't blame Zell at all. I'm sorry. Like, y'all think it's funny? Ha! <laughs> I'm going to laugh too. We all going to laugh around this motherfucker. Everybody laughing. We laughing about Kerr. Smashing on Jasmine. We laughing about him in DC not wearing his ring off up in Jasmine Bob. We laughing about her thing if we're gonna be laughing about me. And it ain't nobody fault but Shekana. And I ain't even gonna say Saucy because Saucy did not start it. It was Shekana. That's Shekana fault. Of course, Yandy and Rashida, they both get an attitude. And they all, well, why y'all had to bring my husband into it? But it's like, why y'all over here giggling and laughing about something that this man is serious about? This man literally had a whole baby mama reveal party to show that he got a child on the way. And everybody thinks shit's funny and it's sweet. And then not to mention, y'all know how Zell goes. Zell goes there. Okay, Zell will really clown y'all for real. His mouth is lethal. So I don't even know why y'all keep trying the man. Spice try to break up the whole tension and pull out a picture of Rennie and her mama just so that Rennie's mom can be in her presence at this time. And y'all, all y'all doing all this damn arguing and fighting. Y'all done brought this girl to tears. Ren Poor Rennie just bust out. Y'all, I just don't. Y'all need to fix this. Y'all doing all this arguing and all this fighting. And I just feel like y'all need to fix this. Seriously. I, and I told y'all that. I had told y'all that. Y'all to be ashamed of y'all still got that damn girl crying. That mean that baby in there going through turmoil and all kind of shit. Quit playing with the pregnant women. Okay, she can't even, that woman didn't even get to really enjoy. She, like she said in that confessional, I ain't even open no gifts. I ain't even no gifts. What's there? 
I ain't get to do nothing because everybody stole Oregon as soon as I fucking got there. And then not to mention, after all of that, everybody's getting up saying they leaving because all the shit done went on. So everybody getting their stuff and they leaving one by one. Yandy and Rashida got the hell on about it at first because they done got embarrassed. But after that, everybody else started leaving and then it's left with Saucy and Rennie. They sitting there talking and Saucy's basically saying, you know, the reason why he's doing all of his stuff is because he cares for Zell. And he kind of is looking out for Zell. You know, as far as like telling him, you know, you don't really know this girl. It would be different if you've been dating this girl for a long time. Y'all had sex and y'all made a baby, but you just met her. And now all of a sudden it's a baby. We ain't seen no ultrasound. We ain't seen nothing. And you so happy to have a baby on the way that maybe this could be a trick. And I agree with Rennie. Saucy, let him do that then. If that's what he's doing, then it's obvious it's because that's what he wants to do. So you have to just kind of let go and let him do him. If he wants to go around telling everybody this is his baby and taking care of this baby, then that's what he's going to do. Nothing you're going to say is going to stop it. So you might as well quit right now before it continues to cause more issues between you and Zell. And I feel like if anything, Zell definitely needs to listen to Rennie when it comes to that. You know, she that woman look like she know a little bit of something or where she coming from. But it's serious, though. It's it's true to Like, this is what Zell seems like he wants to do. So you're going like, to just have to let him figure this out on his own y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode because i honestly just feel like they play really played in our faces this whole episode what did y'all think about the whole um situation with zell going off on shakana shakana keep on saying that zell actually having a real baby by a real woman Oh, uh, it's just, it, like this season is just too much for me. Make sure y'all like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn your post notifications on because y'all know y'all don't want to miss when I come back with the next one.